The real is on the rise. Fuck them other guys. I even gave them a chance to decide. Now that's something they know. Monster Energy Supercross 3, the official video game. Confirmed for sure, dog. <laughs> No, I have no idea if this is actually going to be confirmed or if this is going to come out, but I'm sure it probably will. I'm sure they're going to try to make some more money off of this title of these games. Uh, but I wanted to come in here and talk about this and kind of explain the overall like long-term impact of the Fisher Monster Energy Supercross game series and kind of what, what may happen in the future and kind of the, some of the roads they've been going down and certain stuff like that. I think it's, it's definitely interesting to think about the longevity legacy of it, kind of how everything's going to turn out in the future and stuff. I really hope that they they understand that they... At this point, they honestly need to just completely take their time on Supercross 3, the official video game. And I honestly think they're going to learn that. I think they're going to realize, like, whoa, maybe we should take two years for this next game instead of just one year and really go in there and try to rip apart some of these not-so-great physics systems and whip systems and stuff like that that we have in our game and try to rebuild that from the ground up. That's really the whole key to these milestone Supercross and Motocross games. I honestly think that's what they have to do at this point for it to ever be like some legendary level Motocross game. Something feels like it's got a lot of skill gaps. Something feels like you want to come back and play it over and over and over for more than just a month, right? They're going to have to go in there and basically say, okay, instead of coming out with Monster Energy Supercross 3, the official video game in 2020, you know, that's when it technically should be coming out. Why don't you wait and not release that until 2021 and put all your TLC into it, totally fix your whip systems, make them like an actual, you know, doing different kinds of whips when you jump off of a jump face and not just like you're hitting a button and playing an animation. That is critical, like has to be in there. And the whole thing where it doesn't look like the rider has a stick up his ass when he's on the bike. You know, you got to loosen that rider up a little bit. You have to make it to where you can actually huck up off of a jump face and you don't instantly pop off the bike just because of this weird in air physics thing that they got going on where if you lean the bike too far, and, and when I say too far, I mean like if you barely kind of huck that bike up, you'll just, your, your rider will instantly pop off the bike in the air for no reason. And if you try to whip too far, he'll just instantly pop off like he got shot from a sniper in the stadium or something. Like, it's it's insane. It makes no sense. So fixing all of that kind of stuff, I think, is the most important thing. You know, all those little, like, buggy physics type things like that. And then they can work into actually designing the, the tracks themselves a little bit better. I think it would be smart for them to to be able to make it to where the suspension of the bike actually has a little bit more of an impact, not so much of a cloud filling, but not janky like MXGP Pro, where you just pop off the bike instantly, jump in a five-foot double. <laughs> like, you, you know, you just pop off like you landed a 500-foot tabletop and over-jumped it in real life or something like that. Like, you, you know, you got to be able to get that kind of stuff down. And, and then you can work into your tracks being designed around that. And then after all that, you know... Then you can go in there and really think about the content you want to add. It, even if you don't want to add a whole other motocross series into it, like an AMA motocross series, you at least need to have a handful or better of just like just standard motocross national tracks in the game. At least, at least in Supercross 3, the official video game. You know, it has to have that, I feel like. Um, and, and at least have like two or three free ride tracks, man, full blown free ride tracks. That's just expected at this point. And you got to go in there and have your two strokes, have your fun little, like maybe a 50 CC bike, some of this other little fun stuff that really makes you want to continue to play these motocross games for years and years and years and, and figuring out your whole system of having not only improving your track editor for the consoles, but going in there and figuring out a way you can get a full-blown extensive track editor in Monster Energy Supercross 3, the official video game, on PC, all right? All I'm trying to do is help you out here, man. All I'm telling you is the the basically the map that's been laid out to have a super successful motocross game. That is all I'm basing this off of, bro. I'm just seeing what made all these other 
some of these other motocross games like legendary level and super amazing and last decades like that that's what i'm trying to tell you to do i'm not saying you have to make your game exactly like those games but i'm just saying you have to run more off of that sort of map if you ever want your game to actually be remembered for more than a month or be played for more than a month like you've got to you've got to do these things they have to be done man so that's my kind of take with the whole like Supergrass 3 the official video game and what I want to see in it and I, I absolutely hate whenever people they, they love to bring up the whole comparison of it being like an NBA 2k game or something like that and I just don't understand when people make that comparison at all because it's like I can understand like with an NBA 2k game maybe you want to play as LeBron on the Lakers and you've got all these different stats of all these different players and they keep up to date you know some dude in real life in basketball NBA breaks his ankle so then he's not in that next year of NBA 2k and you got all your like up-to-date teams and the, the ratings and the championships and who's on what team with other players on the team that you're playing with. So it makes way more sense to have a like an NBA game come out every year with up-to-date stuff on it than it does a motocross game. That doesn't even make sense on a motocross game. Like, let's just say Eli Tomac totally changes bike manufacturers, totally gets on a different bike team next year or something, no one gives a fuck, man. No one cares to play as Eli Tomac on a Yamaha instead of a Kawasaki because he changed teams one year or whatever. Like, no one cares, dude. And no, there's not really, like, stats to the riders and the teams in motocross. is not like teams on a, on a basketball team. So all you people trying to compare it to an NBA 2K or, like, a Madden, you're you're not thinking straight at all. And I'm being dead ass with you. Like, you're not really thinking about it, man. You've got this fantasy in your head like, oh, motocross finally has this reoccurring, you know, NBA 2K style game that comes out every year. So, Spencer, it's like NBA 2K. They don't have to make massive improvements to it, man. And it can come out every year and you can keep paying that $60 AAA price for not very much of an improvement because it's like NBA 2K. Dude, <laughs> like cut the crap, man. It's not like NBA 2K. It's not like that at all. So stop trying to make that comparison. Because the reasons why people pay for an NBA 2K and a Madden every year is not the same reasons why you'd pay for a new motocross game every year. It's not even the same kind of game. So for the love of God, please quit trying to compare the official Monster Energy Supercross game to like an NBA 2K and trying to defend the game. Like I've said in multiple videos before, the super crazy Milestone fanboys will find any way to defend anything you know what I'm saying? They they just they'll come up with anything, man. And I know there's a lot of you milestone game fans that you 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 like the games, you enjoy them, but you're not like crazy retarded with the way you try to defend the game. You understand there's issues with it. You understand you're paying sixty dollars for a fourth of what you used to get in motocross games. Like you get all that, but you still enjoy the game. And you guys know what's up, you know. But there's some of you out there and. And there's a lot of young people in the world that just don't really understand. They just don't know. Or it's some dude that likes real-life Supercross, but they don't understand motocross video gaming in full. You know, there's a lot of bigger, like, YouTubers and stuff that tried out the Fisher Monster Energy Supercross game. The first one, I remember Angry Joe hopping on there and playing it. Like, you know, they hop on there and play because they see it's like this bigger hit title thing. But that doesn't mean they fully understand motocross games. So I think that's one of the biggest issues and why you see a lot of this kind of like crazy sort of backlash when anybody says something negative about the Fisher Monterey Supercross game because there's just a lot of people it brought everybody out of the woodworks you know it brought people out that that this is the first motocross game they've ever played you know they like real life motocross they like um you know Supercross they watch it on TV so they want to get the Fisher Monterey Supercross game but they don't understand how MX Simulator has 10,000 times the physics feeling real on the bike feeling so they wouldn't understand whenever the official monster Energy supercross game comes out with a like a trailer or whatever and it says this is the most realistic motocross experience you can get you, you realize when you've played a game like mx simulator how that's like literally fucking laughable when they when they make trailers and stuff like that so you have to point that kind of stuff out but not even comparing it to a simulator if you just compare it back to games like reflex and even when you go back to unleashed and untamed for their time you know it's hard to compare them to this now but for their time they, they had more of a 
full-blown motocross game experience. It's just, it's with the official Monster Energy Supercross game. People can't get it in their head. They get so caught up in the everything other than the actual game itself, right? And they don't realize. They just don't get it. They... They, they, it's like they they want this kind of game so bad that they can't even see the problems with it. And I see it time and time again. And I'm not saying you have to hate these games. I'm not saying, you know, oh my gosh, like, let's just say they're the worst things in the entire history of mankind. I'm just saying they don't stack up to what a lot of people think they do or what they claim to be or what it might seem to be from the outside. A lot of times it just does not stack up to that. Um, you know, it's more, it's turning into more of a cash cow than it is like your, your old school, amazing full blown MX versus ATV games like you used to get back in the day, right? It's turning into more of a, we're going to sell this to everybody, including two year old Johnny PP pants, because no one, no one really knows motocross games in that family or whatever. You know, they may know real life motocross. They don't, they're not really into motocross gaming like that though. You know, there's so many people that they'll buy official Monster Energy Supercross game 5 or 10 and it be like barely better than the first game but they'll still buy it and buy all the ones in between just because of the title of the game right you you, you get what I'm saying but they don't really even care about the gameplay or the content it's just they're buying it because it's the next official Monster Energy Supercross game and that happens time and time again but um it's one of those things. It's going to be interesting to see how this all pans out, right? If we get into Fish and Monster Energy Supergirls game three and then four, and if they keep coming out with it every year, it's like, good God. Um, at some point, either it's the whole, it's the Call of Duty syndrome, right? It's what I like to call it, where these games start coming out way too damn frequently in a certain company, and then you're starting to see like a fourth of the content. Um, you're seeing all this stripped out stuff. You're seeing things that aren't even ready yet. They get like obsessed with the money value of it. So they're, they're trying to pump out another game versus giving you a full blown $60 worthy AAA titled game. And that's happening with damn near every single uh, type of game out there now. You know, it ain't just motocross games. You can, you can compare it to everything. Call of Duties. If it wasn't for Call of Duty ripping the whole Battle Royale thing, that this Black Ops, what the hell is it now? Four, they're on Black Ops damn 69 now. Like, um, you know, that game would have been nothing without Blackout. Absolutely nothing. Would have been trash, you know. Um, Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, trash. Black Ops 3, okay, but not amazing, right? But, I mean, it's just like they pump them out way, way, way too frequently. People just get tired of it, you know. It's like that... You can only do so much in a game in a certain amount of time when it comes to um, the actual development of a game. So you just imagine like a game that comes out every year. It's impossible, literally impossible for that to have the same amount of content and full blown longevity and replayability to that game and, and TLC systems and stuff to it as a game that game company that makes a game every two years. When you talk about the AAA realm you know, obviously you've got some indie developers that take five years to make a game or whatever, and it's kind of a different situation because they don't have nowhere near the, the amount of people working on it. But when it comes to AAA level, you know, game creators, I think any game company out there, if they're having these like reoccurring style games, other than like an NBA 2K or, an, or a Madden because they have to keep up with the team stuff. See, that's that's my whole point is... People like to go in there and make that excuse like the official Monster Energy Supercross game is just trying to be that NBA 2K game, so it's okay that they come out with it every year and make you pay the full price even though you're not getting the full extent of what a, a new AAA game would normally have in it. You know, people are starting to use that as an excuse, and it's just stupid because it's not even like an NBA 2K game. And I, hopefully I explain that to you guys. Like, no one gives two shits to ride as... Cooper Webb on a Cal on a KTM instead of a damn Yamaha. No one gives two shits. No one cares to ride as, you know, Chad Reed on JGR or whatever instead of whatever, you know, whatever he was on beforehand. Like, no one really cares. In the team aspect of it, doesn't even matter because you don't even have stats on riders in motocross games. You don't really have, like, Tomac's actually faster in the game than... 
um, Anderson in the game or whatever the case may be. It's not really like that. A lot of times in motocross games, you just make your own rider and play as your own rider. The whole thing where you actually play as other riders in motocross games, that's a very, like small aspect to the game. It's kind of a one-off thing, like, oh, I'm just going to screw around and hop on the Eli Tomac in the game just for shits and giggles. Like, it's not really how you play the game. That's never how you've played a motocross game. It's not like when you get on there and you're playing as the Lakers on an NBA 2K, and it's like, all right, we got LeBron, we got Onzo Ball, we got, you know, Kuzma, all these dudes on here. And it's like, all right, or you go to the Golden State Warriors and you're going against the Lakers in the new NBA 2K game. So now it's Steph Curry, all the dudes against LeBron and all the other guys on the Lakers. You see what I'm saying? So then it creates that entire, like, actual game there. It makes a new game, but it's not really like that in a motocross game. It's just not like that. So stop making the damn excuse that Milestone can just shovel out these games every year and not give you a whole lot more new stuff and, and still charge you AAA money for it. Either two things have to happen here, Milestone. Either you're going to have to start making your games half the price because that you're giving us half the game every year. Either start making them half the price or start restricting to only making one game every two years. I think that's perfect for a AAA company. One game every two years. It allows you to actually process what the hell you've made, process the mistakes you've made, actually make a full-blown really good product in the next game. You know, it, it allows you to actually figure out what the hell you're doing. Um, and not only that, but Milestone comes out with more than one motocross game a year. They come out with the whole MXGP series every year, too. And the Ride series, it's like, good lord, there ain't enough damn manpower in the entire Activision company to make three solid AAA games every year like that. And you're telling me your one little Milestone game company is going to come out with three different dirt bike motorcycle riding games a year? Holy hell. Like, calm your tits down a little bit, man. That's too much. You're making too many games. Calm down, bro. Like, it's okay to skip a year here and there for your Supercross game or whatever, you know? Like, that would be so cool in my mind to, let's just say, not even have the Fisher Monster Energy Supercross game 2 come out in 2019, but have it come out in 2020 and it have double the track content, double the amount of track editing pieces and stuff, and actually feeling like you've got a full-blown longevity fun factor game versus just having this quick little, you buy the game, you play it for a couple months, and then it's over with. You, you know, you're on to the next one. That's how the Milestone Motocross games feel. Whereas Reflex lasted for damn near a decade. You see what I'm saying? And still going. You know, Reflex still going. Came out that long ago. And it's still going because of how how good the base of the game was and how good some of the stock tracks were. And with the whole uh, PC-based track editor, you know, they got to put that in these milestone games at some point. Just so many different little things. And, uh, you, you know, it's just, there. it comes down to this right here. There's only so much you can do in a year's worth of time making a game. There's only so much. So it's like... Milestone, I know you're making all kinds of money. I know you are off the, the title of the Fisher Monster and your Supercross game, and I'm sure there's a lot of freaking money going into just getting the licensing deal to even be able to make that, right? So, you know, I'm probably probably half or better of your profits is going straight into paying AMA Supercross to make the game, you know, to make the games like that, but it's like, Man, I don't know. As, as being a hardcore motocross gaming fan, like this is what I do every damn day. I've made a business out of it. I play these games every day. Simulators, MX bikes, MX simulator, Reflex, Reflex on PC, Reflex on consoles, Reflex custom tracks, MX simulator, crazy amounts of custom tracks I've made. The old games, Unleashed, Untamed, Alive, MX vs. ATV Supercross, MXGP, two, three, MXGP Pro, like, dog, this is what I do all day, every day, so the shit I'm saying, it's like, it's got weight to it, it's got value to it, just because you're mad at what I'm saying, or, you know, you're some young dude, and you, you, you know, you don't really understand what I'm saying, that doesn't mean just hate on what I'm saying, <laughs> get what I'm saying, like, we can disagree here, right, you don't have to agree with what I'm, you don't even have to ever agree with what I'm saying. You can be totally 100% disagreeing with Spencer Turley all the time, and that's okay. But I'm just saying, 
I'm just trying to say, man, like from from an honest standpoint, I don't have anything against Milestone. I'm not just out here trying to hate on Milestone. If the MX vs. ATB franchise was doing this, if Rainbow Studios was doing this, where they come out with the game every single two games every year, and it's like you're seeing a a point five game instead of a whole new game, and you're still having to pay AAA money, I'd be saying the same damn shit about them. People try to get this like I'm exclusively hating on Milestone just because it's Milestone kind of thing. And it's the most retarded excuse I've ever heard in my life. Like, stop just trying to defend things just to defend them. Like, it's pointless, bro. <laughs> you know, I would do this to any gaming company. They're, the Call of Duties would be so much better if they just took a year break between them. They would be a thousand times better. The content you got in them and the, the you know, everything about it. Um, it it's just so pitiful how the, the gaming world has, has become. And it's sad when people make up excuses for it being that way. That's what I get so frustrated at in the, the milestone scene in general is just how many people want to make an excuse for it just because it's the official Monster Energy Supercross game. You see what I'm saying? Um, but by the time we get to official Monster Energy Supercross game three, you know, which should come out in 2020, apparently that's when it's going to come out, even though it's going to have all the 2019 tracks on it which we're going to be pro racing on an MX simulator this year. Um, you know, it'll have all those tracks and stuff on it. And then it'll have like the new riders on the new teams, but no one really cares about that. It's like, man, like, I mean, yeah, you're getting the new, the, that particular year of replica tracks, but I mean, good Lord, man, is it really that big of a deal in an arcade motocross game? I mean, I can I can see it in a simulator because you're trying to make that like full blown, super realistic, actually pro racing with super high skill level people on every single replica track one week before the actual real life track comes out. So, you know, you're racing every single in MX simulator. You're literally when people talk, I love when they make the excuse of like, the official Monster Energy Supercross game is the most realistic AMA racing experience, you know, acting like you're actually going through the full-blown career and it's the most realistic system and all that. But then you've got MX Simulator over here where you're literally racing, pro racing, and it's got amateur racing on each one of the new tracks, damn near exactly when they actually race on them in real life, full-blown replicated stuff each and every week like they do in real life. So on MX Simulator, you actually go in there and you race every week from now until summertime on the real life pro races <laughs> and the points count you get points to an actual championship where you can win actual prizes like thousand dollar helmets custom helmets in real life but no the fist of Monterey supercross game is so much more realistic as far as the career in the campaign mx simulator doesn't even have a career mode uh it really does but you have to be into the game to understand that dumbasses you don't understand. It's actually like a real fucking career with real prizes on the line and real pro level racing that takes you years to get good at. That's just how real MX Simulator is. But no, Fisher Monster Supercross game. It, it's got it going on, man. It's the actual career mode, man. You, you you don't know what you're talking about, Spencer. Okay, you idiots. It's it's not me missing out on something. It's you missing out on something. You understand what I'm saying? I'm doing this so you understand. And I'm not saying you got to love a simulator or play a simulator. I just think a lot of you guys are misinformed. You're misunderstood. You don't get it. <laughs> you know, you don't, if, if you're trying to be in a game, into motocross games like that for that full-blown career feeling, pro race, each and every replica track feeling, then MX Simulator is the way to go 10,000%. But most people just don't realize that, and they don't know how to get into MX Simulator like that, and it creates all these other issues, and it's like, damn. It's like I'm out here trying to explain something. It's just so fucking hard to explain it to people, and then, oh, I'm this big hater of Milestone, so let's just not even listen to what he's saying. It's like, good God, bro. Like, one day, I wish you guys would just realize. And if you played MX Simulator like that, you would realize, but that's the problem. All you do is see somebody play an MX Simulator on some stock track and go, look at those shitty-ass graphics. And then you don't understand that that's more of a realistic AMA career pro racing experience than the actual official Monster Energy Supercross game. <laughs> MX Simulator is more real than that, not just in the bike filling and all that, but in the actual career pro race replica track element to it, right? By the time you get the actual 2000... Um, 19, you know, 
replica supercross races in a milestone motocross or supercross game we will have already pro raced on all of that on mx simulator the year before you know everything's late on the milestone motocross games and so it's like if you, if that's what you're going for if that's what you're trying to to get in a game it just it makes no sense to try to act like the Fisher Monster Energy Supergross game is just so much more of a realistic career experience than any other game out there. It just you can't even really play that card, dude, because it's not. It's just not. Yeah, you got Ralph Shaheen back there chitty chatting and talking, but all that little stuff, it's all just little shits at the end of the day. It's all just like it's all small stuff in comparison to having a a real life pro replica racing series it's just so different than that like it's like are you trying to just have ralph shaheen talk to you and ride as eli tomac in a motocross game or are you really trying to have a full-blown ama pro racing experience in a game like what what are you trying to get because if that's what you're trying to get then you need to play mx simulator and if you're just trying to goof off and have ralph shaheen talk to you then play the official monster in your supercross game it's like what what are you actually trying to get here? You know what I mean? I feel like some people are so confused in that sense. It's like they think they're getting that super realistic AMA replica racing experience in the official Monster Energy Supergross game, but it they don't realize, they don't even understand what MX Simulator is, so they don't get it, you know? Um, so it is what it is, man. But uh, this video is kind of crazy, man. Uh, probably going to be getting a lot of... A lot of fanboys hating on it, but it ain't nothing new. Um, somebody's got to come out here and say the real. I ain't got to do it, but fuck it, somebody got to do it. Hate if someone else did it, fuck I might as well do it. 